So the first question, um, you know, for voters who, who don't really know who you are, kind of, a, I know, you know, you've uh, been in Congress for a bit, but, you know, just explain uh, your background, who you are, uh, and why you're qualified to represent them. Well, sure. So I'm running for re-election in Michigan's 11th district, a new configuration that now comprises uh, an Oakland County seat. I'm a daughter of, of Oakland County and I have been an economic champion for this region since I first started running for Congress and certainly since I've been in Congress. I have served as the vice chair of the Science, Space and Technology Committee where I ushered uh, the CHIPS and, and Science legislation through the Congress, creating a fund to invest in chip manufacturing production right here in the U.S. to address some of our supply chain disruptions, what our auto industry has been experiencing, certainly related to the work that I did with the auto rescue in the Obama administration, but also looking at workforce development solutions. I started the Women in STEM Caucus in the Congress. I I uh, have authored legislation called the Building Blocks of STEM Act, which was signed within my first year in Congress. I'm all about results. I'm all about making sure that federal government works for people in an effective, cost-effective, cohesive way. And the first question, something that's most important to voters this election cycle is the economy. Uh, inflation is the highest it's been in decades. You know, it's affecting uh, you know, people at the pump. They're seeing it. They're seeing it at the grocery store. Uh, what do you think should be done and could be done by Congress to help get this under control and put the economy on the right track? Well, first and foremost, when this pandemic uh, hit our shores and we realized what we were facing both on the public health front and on the economic front, it was a stabilization effort. No one was allowed to fail. Certainly all this incredible innovation that's taking place here in Michigan from electric vehicles to hydrogen technologies that are coming in to automotive along with uh, autonomous vehicle technologies. We want to continue to, to innovate but we need good public-private partnerships. We also need to understand what people are dealing with on a daily basis. If it's the rising cost of higher education, people sending their, their uh, children to four-year degree programs that are now astronomically more expensive and yet no one is being uh, able, no one is able to qualify for, for the aid in the way that we were just 10, 15 years ago. We've got to make sure that we've got a system that works for everyone and so that everyone can succeed. I'm so proud of the Inflation Reduction Act, which will lower the cost of prescription drugs, allow us to invest in those clean energy initiatives, as well as what I had mentioned with the CHIPS and Science Bill, addressing supply chain disruptions. Oil companies are at record profits. They're, they're profiting off the back of individual consumers. We wanna blow the whistle on that. But certainly when it comes to people's taxpayer dollars, we've got to make sure that they are utilized in the most effective way possible and that we here in Oakland County, we know we're paying our share, fair share of, of federal taxes. We want to make sure that we get our fair share of federal resources, which is also something that has been a part of my track record in the Congress. And uh, moving on to another issue that uh, voters said was very significant to them is violent crime. According to the Pew Research poll, I think it was 60% of voters said that was very important to them this election cycle. So, uh, you know, what do you think Congress should and could do um, to, to make voters feel safer? Well, this is clearly a, an example um, of, of how I differ from my opponent because I want to blow the whistle on uh, gun violence in this country and ring it in. Uh, and I'm not, we're not going to do so by continuing to perpetuate the status quo. We have got to ban assault weapons. We've got to address the scourge of violent crime, particularly at the hands of weapons who are, are in the hands of, of people who are seeking to either uh, commit harm to themselves, their families, uh, God forbid, or, or their, their communities. And this has been very palpable here in Oakland County with what took place in Oxford. Uh, at Oxford High School ju just shy of a year ago now. Uh, it had ricochets all throughout Oakland County and frankly our state in, in terms of how that was felt by families and at schools. And we can't just sweep it under the rug. We need law and order. We need a plan for common sense gun safety legislation. I work alongside Moms Demand Action and a host of volunteers. I'm on the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force in the Congress, and this is a huge part of my mission and a commitment that I will make to the residents of Oakland County every day. Violence has no place in our community, and that begins with making sure that we have common sense gun safety legislation. And I know we're keep, you know, moving on to each issue to issue, but uh, another big thing is abortion. Um, you know, ever since Roe v. Wade was overturned, you know, it's kind of up to the states right now, it seems. Michigan, uh, you know, it's on the ballot here. 
Um, so I guess first, you know, what is your position on abortion? And do you think this is something that, you know, the federal government or Congress, uh, you know, should be weighing in on? Well, I believe that a woman has the right to make to her own choices about her own body. It's between her and her doctor. And, and certainly ever since the Dobbs decision came down, we are seeing a moment of reckoning. Frankly, it, it shouldn't be this dangerous to have a kid in the United States of America. It shouldn't be this dangerous to make your own healthcare decisions. These are deeply private matters. And this is why I am a co-sponsor of the Women's Health Protection Act. I believe that we should codify Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. And this is just about freedom. This is just about bodily autonomy. You know, this Dobbs decision comes down in the middle of an ongoing pandemic as we're managing it. It's certainly different today than it was Two, two years ago when COVID first hit our shores. But why, why implement another healthcare disruption? The stress level of our providers, our hospitals, our doctors, those in these professions, they just wanna be able to provide good care. And, and that's what we're working on. And so I'm so proud of our amazing governor, Gretchen Whitmer, who had a plan for this. The, the decisions couldn't be more stark. But you got to also know that Haley Stevens, I'm going to be taking these votes in the Congress and making sure that women have access to choice, particularly over their own bodies. And uh, another big issue is uh, infrastructure. You know, what are some key investments uh, that you think need to be made in Michigan? And, and how would you fight to have those uh, investments secured? Well, I believe that we are leading the way on the infrastructure revolution. If you look at what is taking place with electric vehicle technologies that are being produced right here in Michigan, if it's fuel cell batteries uh, uh, here in Oakland County to what our OEMs are putting into place with actually produce uh, o OEMs with, with, the, with the battery, we've got an opportunity to invest in our grid. We've got an opportunity certainly to fix our roads. I was really pleased as a member of Congress to get the monies for Beck Road, which has been long overdue in Western Oakland County, starting in the Wixom Novi corridor going on down to, to Northville. And some of what we've experienced with infrastructure has been um, a, a failure of, of government. Uh, under Joe Biden and the House Democrats, we got an infrastructure bill done. It was not only the largest investment ever in public transportation, by the way, we wanna see everyone vote for that Oakland County transit millage because I want us to have access to the most dollars. I want a county-wide system that connects people to jobs, that connects people to healthcare, that connects people to opportunity, and so that we are a thriving place. We also, with the infrastructure bill, got the largest investment ever in our Great Lakes. And with that, some of our other watersheds. So coming into the Clinton River, the Rouge River, cleanup, sustainability, rectifying some of the environmental racism that took place over, over years. These aren't wish list items. These are things that got done. It's the delivery agenda that Haley Stevens is focused on in the Congress and will continue to be as long as I have the privilege to serve. And are there any other, any other issues that are you know really important to you that you want to bring up, or that uh, anything else you want voters to know about in the one of this election? Well, I'll I'll say this uh, is is a federal representative. I believe that my my first duty is to be your listener in chief. Uh, this is a district of almost eight hundred thousand people. It is one of the most educated, vibrant, exciting places in the country. It certainly is the most exciting place in the country, in my opinion. But, but in terms of our educational outcomes, our great schools, the next generation, nearly 20% of this district is under the age of 18. And so I am running to be your continued listener in chief, to learn alongside you and to champion who we are in Oakland County in the United States Congress. It is a bragging point. My colleagues ask how we are doing it here, how we rise through every challenge. If it is a COVID-19 pandemic that's disrupting our supply chains to ushering in the jobs of the future and, and the new economy. It's happening here. It's an exciting time and we're going to continue to do great things together.